start verse reading in verse number 27 and we're going to catch up <coughs> where we are is verse number 32 is where we're going to where are we at now? we're going to start at verse number 33 but I'm going to read from verse 27 on and I'm going to go back and review this book with you right now chapter 5 right we're in 5 but we're going to go back and review it all the way up from chapter 2. Okay. okay. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, Christ is born. The Messiah, Hamashiach, is born. Number uh, 8 through 14, the, the angels announced to the shepherds that were over the sacrificial cl 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 flock in Bethlehem. That's where they guard the flock that was going to be offered as sacrifices. These were special shepherds. And so God appeared to these shepherds that would communicate with the priest. You understand this? The priest, the Pharisees have no excuse for not believing. So he dealt with them. Then the shepherds go and visit Jesus from 15 to 20 in the second chapter. Verse 21 to 24, Jesus is circumcised. And again, there were two people there, weren't there? Simeon's prophecy and Anna's testimony. Two of them, they were devout people, lived in that temple area. These were devout people. Do you think that it was by accident that they lived? Simeon said, I thank God that I have lived to see the Messiah, the Hamashiach. Do you think that the Pharisees didn't know? That the high priest didn't know that this happened? Anna's testimony in 36 through 38. Let's just read it. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phineel of the tribe of Asher, and she was advanced in years and having lived with a husband seven years after her marriage, and then a widow to the age of her 84, and she never left the temple, serving night and day with fastings and prayers. Do you think that they knew her? And at that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all those who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Jesus returns to Nazareth. And they try to kill him. Verse 39 and 40. Jesus celebrates the Passover with his parents in Jerusalem. And he stayed behind, and he and the, and the people were astounded and struck out of their senses at his knowledge. The third chapter talks about the ministry of John the Baptist, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. We talked about the different Herods too, and uh, if you're, I don't think you're staying up with all of this on the website, but I talked about the different Herods. Herod the Great that was in charge when Jesus was born was put in place he was a descendant of who? Esau, Esau. and he was put in place by who? Anthony and Cleopatra. Okay, Anthony and Cleopatra and then he had four sons Herod Antipas Aristobulus Herod Archelaus and Herod Philip And then from Aristobulus, we have Herod Agrippa and Herod Agrippa II, which we're going to run into in the New Testament and the book of Acts also. We have the baptism of Jesus in the third chapter in verse 21 and 22. We have the genealogy of Jesus, the genealogy of Jesus through Mary from verse 23 through 38 of that chapter. In the fourth chapter, we have the temptation of Jesus in 4, 1 through 13, where he was out, and, he, and the animals became like they were in the Garden of Eden with Adam, and they came to him. We have that temptation. We have acceptance of Christ throughout Galilee in verse 14 and 15. And we have, again, the rejection of Jesus and tried to kill him in 4.16.
through 30. And then we find Jesus beginning to cast out demons in 31 through 37. We find, and he's healing these people. He's showing that he has power over Satan. And then Peter's mother-in-law is healed in verses 38 and 39. And then we have him dealing with more demons at the end of that chapter. And then in the fifth chapter, guess what we have here, brother? Brother Ray? We have the calling out of the church. We have the calling out of the church. And then verses 12 through 15, we have a leper cleansed. And a leper could be cleansed only by the power of God. And he tells them, to tell no one else, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing just as Moses commanded for a testimony to what? To them, to the priest, that he was the Messiah. Then we have a paralytic killed in verses 16. Through 26. Then we have Matthew. Levi called in verse 27 and let's go there because that's getting up to where we are Matthew, Levi, Matthew, what's Matthew mean? Matthew Matthew, gift of God what's Levi mean? he had a double name, Matthew, Levi Levi, Matthew Levi means joined because, remember Rachel and Leah, this is Leah's child. J Jacob loved Rachel. He didn't want any other wife. He didn't want any concubines. He wanted her. And old Laban, Whitey, that's his name, Laban means Whitey. Whitey tricks him. He gives him Leah. He wakes him. He's drunk. All these people today with this KJO and all this stuff, they, they don't want to believe that the, that the Bible, the people drink wine. Intoxicating wine. They did. They drank it. And they got drunk. Noah got drunk, didn't he? Yeah. All right. Did Jacob get drunk? Yeah. He definitely got drunk. He got drunk and fell in there with the woman that he thought he was his wife. Woke up in the morning, and it was her sister that he didn't want. He didn't want her. And then, old oh, Laban quotes the law of Kamarabi and said I can't give my older daughter or younger daughter before I do the older one now Jacob had two twin sisters probably Leah was the older of the twin sisters she's the one who came out first like Esau and here we have again the rejection of the firstborn and so He looks at her, he goes to Laban and says, what in the world are you doing to me? I've worked seven years this one. Oh, if you only will work seven more years, I will give her you, but you have to say, you have to sleep with her every night and cohabit with her for the rest of the week so you won't offend her. Go out there and, and be with her every night. The act of marriage, every night for the next week. And then you can have Rachel, the one he bargained for. And then he ended up working 21 years, didn't he? That man had a lot of patience. That's all I can say. Had a lot of patience. Let's go back and read this, yes. Go back and read this. Now, And instantly the man stood up. Uh, now this is the man that he, that he healed and walked out. And everybody was overwhelmed and astonished. And then he comes down after he does all these miracles and cleanses this leper and we have a tax collector. Now what kind of guys are tax collectors according to all of all the consensus of the people? Uh, Sharon, do you know? They're a thieving liar and cheats. Now, Brother Vincent, do you remember what a tax collector did in time of Jesus, what he did? 
what was the orders? How did he get in that position? No, I don't know. They usually bought the position, or else it was someone in their family was a was a uh, tax collector. Now, what did the tax collector do? First of all, they're working for the Roman Empire. They did have tax collectors also that worked for Israel, you know, the temple tax and all that business. Jesus went and said, go out there and catch that fish, Peter. Right. And in his mouth, you'll find the pe enough money to pay your taxes and my taxes. So they did have taxes also. But this is a Roman tax. And Matthew, Levi. Now, the Roman government said, now, I want $5 per person. Whatever you require or take or tax them for above $5 is yours. And so the tax bill was $20 most of the time, isn't it? Three and four times more than what the actual tax was. And we have another guy down there. You remember that little old guy that was up there in the sycamore tree? Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a rich man. And, and if man didn't have money to pay his taxes, he said, well, I'll take that nice looking sheep over there. I'll take that goat. That slave over there. Now, you don't need him anymore or her. How about that nice shiny Cadillac you got out there? That would be just right. Of course, they didn't have Cadillac, but it was a nice, well-groomed camel whatever and so they got rich 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 evidently Matthew Levi was not one of that type of person but he, he was acquainted with all of them wasn't he and this is where we start meditate and after this Jesus went out and looked in attentively he looked into Matthew Levi's heart at a tax collector named Levi and Levi means joined because Rachel, Rachel had Jacob's heart and Leah wanted his heart too. And she said, now that I've given him these sons, surely he will be joined to my heart. He will love me too. As far as I can tell, after Rachel died, he never was with another woman. Did you hear that? As far as we know, and as far as I can tell, after Rachel died, Jacob never had any more children. Those women could have had more children. But I think it broke his heart, and he was never with them there again. Daddy, he had 12 sons. He had 12 sons. A tax collector named Levi. He goes all the way back. To Levi in the Old Testament. Now Levi turned out to be a not so good guy. What were the horrendous crime that Levi committed? What's the horrendous crime that Levi and Simeon com committed? Shechem. At Shechem. Yep. We have the, the Shechemites, Shechem, Shechem himself comes down, he wants to marry that, that girl. What was her name? Dinah. It's fem Dinah. That's feminine for Dan, by the way, which means judge. Dinah is feminine for Dan. Now, Dinah uh, goes up in the city and starts looking around like girls do. She liked to shop, Marilyn. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Dinah went shopping. And Dinah got shopped. Shechem which was the son of the man, of, of, of the Canaanite of that whole country. That boy fell in love with that girl, and I guess the girl fell in love with him. Now, the Bible says in, in some of the translations that, uh, that he defiled, flowered her. But I don't think he did. Mm -hmm. Because when they go to start dealing with her, they didn't let her go home. But when, he's, when they start dealing with her, they call her a virgin. Evidently, she was still a virgin. Now, who ended up marrying this girl? They broke her heart. Who ended up marrying this girl? You remember? Simeon marries her. Simeon marries her, and they have children. 
Her own brother married her, yeah. Well, Dinah goes up there. Shechem takes her to his home. And he goes down and he meets with Jacob and all the boys. And uh, you know that they weren't Jewish because of what they said. Remember what they said? They come in there and they said, Now, Jacob and your sons, don't be afraid to ask a high dollar for this girl. Whatever you ask, we're going to pay for it. Name, the sky is the limit. Whatever you want for her, we will give you. But we want you to have, we want your blessing upon this marriage. We families want to be part of you. We want to be part of your clan. We want to be part of your, your, your family. We know that God has blessed you, and we, they, we want God to bless us. So please, whatever you want to ask for her, ask five times more, ten times more, whatever it takes, we'll pay it. Pretty good deal, isn't it, Vincent? Which some of my clients would tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> five, ten times, whatever you want, just ask it. It's yours. And then those Jewish boys, deceitful little boys, Simeon and Levi get together and they says, I'll tell you what, you are uncircumcised. We will not give our sister to people that's uncircumcised. If you want to be like us, you've got to believe in our God. Now, when you were circumcised, what did they do? Sharon, do you remember that? What was the first thing they did? When you made a proselyte, what was the first thing they did? Well, they had to teach you. They had to make a profession of faith. What was the next thing? They baptized them. Baptized them. And then what? After all this over, they took them and they circumcised them. They cut their foreskins off. And after that happens with a grown man, you are very sore. They're just laying around. And on the third day after the circumcision, when they were the most sore, the boys go in there and murder every one of them. All the converts were murdered. And then we have the Canaanite Wars, where the book of Jasher says there was 100,000 Canaanites killed. And those warrior boys were bloodthirsty. When they went down in Egypt, their, their renown had already reached Egypt. And as long as those boys were alive, any of those boys were alive, those Egyptians were scared of them. And by the way, Joseph was the war leader of Pharaoh. And they went out on all of Pharaoh's war, all the Egyptian wars. They won the battles. But what happened there in the beginning is they murdered these, all this whole city and took all of their wives and cattle and everything they had as booty. And Jacob castigated them terribly and he said, you will cause me to stink in these people's nostrils. Not only that, we're going to have a war for a long time and evidently, there were 100,000 people died. And old Jacob got out there right with them and fought. Right with those boys. And they were famous, famous fighters. Levi. Levi, because of his actions there, Jacob said, you will never have an inheritance in the land. You robbed and you stole that city and you will never have an inheritance. But by God's grace, what did he do? He took those thieves, liars, and cheats and turned them into priests. Boy, that makes me feel better already. Levi, a tax collector. Now he's a uh, elbow with elbow, uh, bellied up to table with these scoundrels that weren't quite so honest. And Matthew, Levi, now Jesus looked into his heart and he saw him sitting at a tax office table and he said to him, join me as a disciple and uh, follow me. And side with my party and accompany me, that means follow and listen to me. Now look what he did. We know he wasn't a priest. We know he wasn't a Pharisee. Because he forsook everything and got up and followed him, becoming his disciple and siding with his people and his church. Now he is a church member. 
And Levi, Matthew, made a great banquet for him in his own house. What is he doing? Remember what Zacchaeus did? He threw a big banquet. He said, Jesus said, today I'm going to have a banquet with you. And then the Pharisees and the scribes and the Levites had wall-eyed calypso and fit about that too, didn't they? And what was the first thing that Zacchaeus said? Please, Lord, forgive me. Whatever I've stolen, I'm going to different fold, sevenfold, all this. He just goes on quoting the law because he had knew, knows that he had sinned. And there was a large company of tax collectors, sinners. These other guys weren't quite like Matthew, Levi. And others who were reclining, laying up the table. Remember how they did that? Let's go back for the all of you out there that don't know this. Out there in Webland. Here's a table. And along the table here are pallets and cushions all around here. That's all cushions, see? And people laid up the table. They laid up to the table. They were not sitting in chairs like you're sitting in here. They were laying up to the table, laying on their left side, and eating with the right side. Now, I tell you what, that must have not been good for the, for the digestive system. I don't know. Maybe it kept them from eating too much. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> laying like that. And the food was out here on dishes, all over in the middle, like a lazy Susan looking thing. And here the people were with their feet this way and their heads this way. And that's the picture that we have here. Laying up the table. Reclining, laying up the table with them, and now the Pharisees and their scribes were grumbling. Always grumbling. Did they have notice of who Jesus was? Remember Simeon and Anna? The shepherds in the field that were over the sacrificial flock? And now the Pharisees and their scribes were grumbling. Who the scribes? Remember who the scribes were? Brother Ray? Hello. Huh? Of the law? No, who's this? Mary, uh, Sharon. Oh, the writers. They were the ones that copied everything. These are the county clerks. Right. They recorded everything. They had to record every time Jesus did a miracle. And every miracle was an indictment to them. And now the Pharisees and their scribes were grumbling against Jesus' disciples, saying, Why are you eating and drinking with tax collectors, preeminently sinful people? Verse number 31, Jesus replied to them. The master replied to them. The master of the universe replied to them. Jehovah, the Old Testament, uh, replied to them. It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. They don't need a healer. But those who are sick. Those who are sick. I have not come to arouse and invite and call the righteous, but to the erring ones. Before you can ever get saved, you have to say, I'm a sinner. Did you know that? We are sinners, aren't we? Are we sinners? Yes. You have to say you're sinners before you can get saved. Call the righteous, but the erring ones, those not set free from sin to repentance, that is, to change their minds, for the better and hardly amend their ways with abhorrence of their past sins. Verse number 33. Now that's where we're going to start. Hoi de apon pros auton. You got that open? Who's going to follow me with this? Hoi de apon pros auton. Hoi. Mathete, Ewanu, Nes tu Usen, Pigna, Kai, Deisios, Deisies, that is, Poionte, Homios, Kai, 
hoy ton faracion hoy de si soy esti usen kai panusen. And the ones they said to him, verse number 33, the ones disciple of John, John who? John the Baptist. They fast. They go without food. Going without food, in fact, you know what breakfast means? Have you, how many of you had breakfast today? Anybody had breakfast? Today I didn't. Well, you had breakfast. Nothing today. What's breakfast? What does breakfast mean? You're breaking a fast. Did you eat anything today, Brother Rot and Brother Ray? Did you eat? Didn't you go in there a while ago? Did you eat anything? Oh, just now. Yeah, that's breakfast. You broke your fast. Marilyn, did you eat anything for breakfast today? Very little. Did you break your fast? That's what breaking your fast means. You ate. If you ate anything, you broke your fast. And the ones they said to him, the ones disciples of John, habitual learners of John, they fast. They go without food. They do this all the time. That's present indicative active. Often, pigna, pigna, that is, John, or Luke uses some high terms, different from all the other books. He uses this high term for often. And uh, prayers. They fast often and prayers they make. In the same way, homios, that little adverb there. And also, on top of that, just like the ones of the Pharisees, but the ones to you, they eat and they drink. Your disciples eat and drink. Now on Tuesday and Thursday, they fasted from dawn to dusk. From dawn to dusk on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So they fasted how many times a week? Two times a week. Two times a week. And you know why they fasted? Because that was in the Mishnah and the Talmud. That's what they did. That was man's rules, not God's rules. On Tuesday and Thursday they fasted. From dawn to dusk. All the daylight time. But they ate up a storm after the sun went down. Yeah, how many of you heard about Ramadan? Ramadan? What is Ramadan? You know? The, uh, the Muslims, they practice that. They fast for a whole month. Right. Do they fast for a whole month? They did that where I was at. Did they fast for a whole month? No. Yeah. No. Oh, well, no, they don't. I don't know if it was a month, but they fasted. Only they, from dawn to dusk. Right. Except the evening time. They ate all night long. Right. Now just talk about going without food. Now they'll tell you they fast for the whole month. But their food bills are higher than ever. Because every night they have a banquet. Right. After dusk they have a banquet. Every night. And after the sun goes down they eat. The followers of a Muslim, a Muhammad do the same thing today in their whole month of Ramadan. But you eat and you drink. You constantly eat and drink. Third person plural, present addictive active. And third person plural, present addictive active. Ask the usin and, and penusin. Verse number 34. Ho de asus. A pan pros autus. Me deneste. Tu suius. Tu nymphonos. In ho, ho, nymphios, met alton, esten, boyese, nes to a sea. But the Jesus, more over the Jesus, or furthermore the Jesus, that word day there, that's how that verse starts out, that we could first in conjunctive particle, page 85, if you want to put that down. Moreover, and furthermore, that Jesus, he said to, to them, not, little particle of negation there, not ye are able, second person plural, present indicative passive, near, not ye are caused to be able, the sons of the bridal chamber. 
That word nymphonos. A woman in the past uh, that was called a nymphomaniac. You know what that means? Literally, it comes from Greek. That means her bed. And the bride, as we studied a while ago, Leah, when she was married to her husband, she kept in bed for a whole week. And that week, he was in the nymphonia, the bridal chamber. That's where you get the word nymphonia or nymphomania from, the bridal chamber. The bride was named after her bed. Sons of the bridal chamber. And then it says, in which the bride, the bride, Nymphios, the groom actually, the husband of the bride, with them. While the, uh, the groom is with them. It is to make to fast. Let's go back and look at this, these two verses in the Amplified. Then they said to him, the disciples of John, practice fasting often and offer up prayers and special petitions from Tuesday on the day of Tuesday, from, from daylight to dusk, all right, and on Thursday. This is what they did. Now, whose laws was this? The Mishnah and the Talmud. The Mishnah and the Talmud. It's not God's law. And they offer up prayers and special petitions. So do the disciples of the Pharisees also. But yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make a wedding guest fast? As long as the bridegroom and the bride are there in the wedding? The Jews, they would have a wedding. They would get up and say, here this man is and here this woman is. And they would go into the bridal chamber and they would be there and everybody would be cheering because the husband and the wife were together. They had become one. The husband and the wife were together. And this is a great joy and because they're going to have children. That's what they hope. And so they will go do this and everybody outside, they are dancing around and drinking and eating. And how long do they do this? A whole week. <clears throat> By the way, that tribulation period over here is a week of years. Because Jesus will be with his bride in heaven for that whole week. I don't know how anybody can make that tribulation period and have the church go through that when the church is up there with the Lord <laughs> during that bridal week. Can you fast when everybody is at a wedding? Would that be smart to do? No, you go and eat just like everybody because you're insulting them if you don't. Insulting them, brother. Yeah, you're <laughs> insulting them. But the days will come, he says in verse number 35. Let's look at that. Ilosante de emere kai hotan aparte op alton ho nymphios tote nes tu usisin. In Echines, Teis Hemeros. Now, the only reason to fast was to seek and desire the presence of the bridegroom. Jesus had said that he would be with everyone, every assembly, wherever they were, until the end of this age, didn't he? But he's going to be, his immediate presence is going to be taken from them. We could verse the conjunctive particle, day. Moreover, or furthermore, or after this, they shall come, the days, and when he is taken away from them, the bridegroom, then they shall fast in those days. Did Peter ever fast after this? Did Paul fast? Were they ever in prison? they ever need to fast? Were they ever caused to fast because they didn't have food to eat? Involuntary fasting? Yes. 5 and verse 36 now. 5 and verse 36.
elegane de kai parabolain pros altus hote udes epi balema apo hematiu kainu skisos epi bale epi hemation paleon a de me gay kai to kainon skitze kai to paleo u sim fo nese to epi blema to apo to kainu remember this is the longest gospel it's got 1,100 and something verses, and the verses are long. This one took me three pages to write this, this, this Greek verse on. Now here's something that the uh, Gospel of Mark is fond of this word right here, elegane. That's third person singular and perfect indicative active, and he kept on telling. Moreover, furthermore, after this, he kept on telling them also a parabole. Parable means a parable. Now we have Jesus teaching in parables. Now, would have anyone ever taught in parables before Jesus? Most of the Old Testament so-called rabbis would teach their students in parables. So Jesus, the master rabbi, is teaching his students, and these people are hearing parables as he's throwing something physical beside something spiritual so they can understand it. He threw these parables to them, toward them, that no one, epiblema. Have you ever heard of the word blemish? What's a blemish? A blemish? It's a stain. It's a hole in your clothing sometimes. I was wearing a pair of pants the other day preaching, and it's a pair of pants with a hole in the knees. I was acting like all these young people, you know, they got holes all over the place. That's worth $100. That's worth $100 to have these pants with the holes all over them. That's blemish pants. That's a blema. We get word blemish from that blema. Epiblema. Now you know where it comes from. There it is. Blemish. Epiblema. And that no one, he puts upon, it means upon a, a, a blemish. You take a patch and put upon a blemish. Marilyn? I know all about them. <laughs> Some of my shirts are more patches than they are shirts. <laughs> Is that right? Some of them? Patches on patches. Patches on patches. Patches all over the place. Some of them, I don't wear, I don't throw away clothes, do I, Brother Ray? No, I don't. We were talking over at the coast the other day, and, he, and Helen, your stepmother, was there and talking to somebody there, and uh, he said, He baptized my daughter <laughs> so many years ago. And I said, Then I said, I went over there at Jezreel and I baptized somebody else here a while back, and I was wearing the same shirt and same pair of pants I'd, I wore. 40 years before, 35 years, whatever it was before. And then she laughed and she said, yes, he was. <laughs> Wearing the same clothes. So Carrie, that she said, what? <laughs> and they don't have any patches on them either. I use them for that purpose only. That's a, a shirt and a pair of pants that I have for that purpose only. And then Brother Brother Morning he says, you know what? He said, I couldn't get in my clothes that I wore 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're different. Hey boy, he's huge. Well, I still get into the same clothes. And then I told him, I said, I'm still wearing Brother Rory Reed's snowbird suit that Marilyn doesn't like. She doesn't like my snowbird suit. Yes. Take the clothes. Yeah. Because the boys were coming in kind of Patches. Patches. Religions are a, a religion of patches. Do you know that? Yeah. Many religions have too many patches. When they talk about baptism, they got patches, they got sprinkling, they got pouring. And not only that, it's a it is a vehicle of grace. And they look at the, the Lord's Supper and it has patches on it. It's a vehicle of grace. And the Catholic Church even has marriage 
as a vehicle of grace. And prayers as vehicles of grace. Patched up religions. Patched up religions. That's the title of this message. Patched up religions. Patched up religions. And he kept on saying also a parable to them. That no one the upon the blemish, the patch, from a garment, new. It says schizos. We got a word schizophrenia. That's when you got two different kinds of thought in your mind. You you think you're two different people. Schizo. Uh, that's when you talk about splits in a congregation. The church is all split up, and and we have schisms in the church, splits in the church. Now, if you take new cloth and you take a pair of old clothes, now, many people don't know anything about Sanfordized clothing today because all of it is... They used to have to buy Levi's six inches longer than they were or three inches or two inches longer and bigger around. I still do that. I still wear those old 501s, the original 501s. So I buy them two or three inches big and I buy them two or three inches long. And then when you wash them, they shrink up. Then if you take those old Levi's and you put a new piece of cloth on them and you wash it, what happens? It'll tear the clothes. It doesn't work. We talked about in the last class systematic theology, didn't we? We talked about systematic theology. A system of teaching that is in the Word of God. And what's wrong with the world today? Why do we have all these denominations and, and cults? Because of the lack of systematic theology. Who is God? What is his desire? Does he ask anything of you to get saved? Only believe in him what he has already done. Believe in him what he's already done. The plan of salvation is complete. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life and shall not perish. If you don't trust in God's work, your works won't get you to heaven. Even though when we're saved, we should follow the Lord in his pathways. But we're saved by grace. For in grace you are having been saved through faith. And that faith didn't come from you either. It's a gift of God, a lot of works, lest any man should boast. For we are created unto good works in Christ, that we should walk around in them. And the patch from the garment, new, tearing, splitting, and it just destroys. It throws it down, is what it says. Upon the garment old. And it says, otherwise, both the new, it shall be tore up, and the old, it shall not harmonize. And that's what's wrong in the world today. Why isn't there harmony in Christianity today? Because of division and splits. Because they didn't study systematic theology. It shall not harmonize, it shall not agree. That word is symphonie. Have you ever been to a, a, a symphony lately, Mar Sharon? Mm -hmm. How about it, Benson? Have you been to a symphony lately? Yeah, a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah a couple months symphony. That and those the sounds go together. Mm -hmm. The sounds go together, and this will not simplify the patch and the thing from the new. Let's go back and read that in verse number thirty-five and thirty-six. And the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and they will fast in those days. And he told them a, a parable, a proverb. No one puts a patch from a new garment on an old garment. If he does, he will tear both the new piece of cloth and the patch, and it will tear the old cloth, and they will not symphonize the old and the new. And then he goes in verse 37, he starts another parable. Verse number 37. <clears throat> and this is a long verse too. Kai udes. 
Bale oinon, neon, ace oscus, paleus, a day may, gay, ritze, ho oinos, ho neos, tus oscus, kai altus, ek ki theisete, kai hoi oscoi apolonte. <clears throat> Here again now, Brother Ray, you know, half of the modern, this KJO and all these people today, they're saying that Jesus drank, didn't drink any intoxicating liquor and they didn't have it. Here we have fermenting liquor, wine, oinos. And no one he throws wine new into wineskins old. Now old wineskins are made out of leather. These are leather bottles, okay? How many of you ever seen a leather bottle? The sheep herders used to carry this, and they have this leather bottle, you know, like this, and then they have a cork in it. And people, old wineskins and new wineskins, new wineskins were made for new wine so the wine would ferment. And beer and wine, all of this stuff ferments, doesn't it? And it blows up, it ferments, it, it uh, ferments. It works with the yeast in it. And in this wine, in these wine bottles, they will expand because they have a cork on them. And they expand and they blow the wine skin out. And then when the wine is supposed to be ready, they take the cork out and they start using it. Now most of these people didn't drink wine straight because the old wine skins now, they put water in. And they put enough wine in the old wine skins that will uh, kill the bacteria, the bad bacteria in the water because much of the water is bad. And so instead of having a uh, chlorine tablets back then, they just put wine, alcohol, and the alcohol killed the bacteria. And he said, now no one, he throws new wine into old wineskins because it will burst, it will rip, it rips, rip, come from ritze. rip, ritze. It will rip the wine and the new wineskin and it all shall be thrown out. It'll go out. The wine will go out of the skins. And now you've destroyed your wine bottles and you've destroyed your wine. It doesn't work. Old wine skins were used to carry a little wine mixed with the water so you'd go out and you would be safe wherever you traveled. The wine skins would be, they shall be unloosed and destroyed. Third person, plural, future, indicative, middle, for themselves. You put new wine in old wine skins and it's going to burst and they'll be over with. 38. Ola, oinon, neon, ace, ascus, kainus, blation. But wine new into wine skins new, one must put. Verse number 39 now. Verse 39. Kai udes. Pion, Paleon, Dele, Neon, Lege, Gar, Hoi, Paleos, Christos, Esten. And no one, having drunk old, he wishes new. And he says, for the old good it is. Let's go back and read these last three verses. And he told them a proverb also, no one puts a patch on a new garment because it'll rip it. Verse number 37, and no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Now everybody knew this. This is not, this is, this is, children know this. You don't have to be an advanced super theologian to understand this little message. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Nobody does this. If he does, the fresh Wine will be burst and the skins and they will be spilled and the skins, 
the bottles and the wine is both lost and destroyed. And no one after drinking old wine immediately desires new wine, for he says the old is good and better. And who was doing that? The Pharisees. The Pharisees. They didn't want the new covenant. They didn't want the Messiah. They didn't want him. They were very happy with the old wine, weren't they? The old covenant. They were happy with that. Brother Vincent, what song do we have of invitation? Uh, 521. 521. Now, if you're out there, we've studied two lessons on systematic theology in all reality. We studied from the, the Greek New Testament, the Gospel of Luke, and it's telling us the same thing. Don't mix up paganism with the truth. The Old Testament law pointed them to Christ, but they didn't want Christ. They wanted to worship the law. When you go over there in the land of Palestine, you've been over there at the, at the Wailing Wall, they take out the scriptures and they kiss the scriptures. Don't kiss the scriptures, kiss the Son. The Son of God, the Messiah. They're still worshiping those scriptures and still denying Jesus Christ as their Savior. Brother, what do we have? Savior say thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness watch and pray, find in me thine all in all, Jesus paid it all, and all to him my own, sin has left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Our Heavenly Father, we send this message out to glorify you and to bring people that may be religious but don't know you that they'll have a personal encounter with our Savior and that he'll be new in their hearts and they'll have eternal life Father thank you for your word and thank you for forgiving us for we failed you in Jesus name we pray Amen